welcome to the Business Mentor Podcast and Videocast. I want to thank you. Uh, we've been excited to get you on the, onto the show. Thanks for having me. It's a great pleasure and it's an honor for me. And thank, thank, and thank you. We, we, we got this book and I'm going to recommend this book and also the personalized note, which was amazing um, from your PA, which was really good. I want to thank her for sending it, Kinga. So uh, that was really good. So look, I want to get into the interview. There's been a lot of excitement. I've been sharing it on my social media. And I want to start off with, you know, just talk about what inspired you to do the book. We're going to go deep into this anyway, and then a bit about your story. So what inspired you to, you know, do a book and meet these amazing people? And obviously, apart from the obvious, what, what, what was it? Well, you know, my entrepreneur uh, journey myself, because uh, I was... Uh, Myself an entrepreneur back in the 90s already. I was pioneering e-commerce in uh, in Europe. Um, in in the late 90s, I created the first online shop for sporting goods in, in the German speaking market. It became a multi-million dollar company pretty quickly, and it looked quite successful from outside. Uh, but I didn't it didn't feel successful from the inside. I mean, I, yeah. it was like. A, uphill battle all the time, firefighting, I mean, you know, in, in yeah, yeah. business there is a lot of stress and it's, uh, always, you look always at the competitors and in my case, you know, uh, my competitors came later but became more successful, grew faster, outperformed me and um, uh, it didn't feel good. I mean, I was a millionaire at, uh, but it didn't feel like a success, right? Yeah, and I, yeah. I realized uh, I was missing something in my person, uh, in my personality, in my entrepreneurial personality. Because until then, I thought if you have a great business model or the right business model, you will become successful. Yeah. But it turned out it's just not enough. I mean, it's a lot about your personality, about uh, how you act in business. I mean, because we all had the same business model in uh, my industry, and I believe in most industries, you have the same business model. Generally. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, the difference is just between the teams, or and the team is, is actually established by the entrepreneur. It's developed by the entrepreneur, and uh, you hire people, you train them, you somehow motivate, inspire them, and so on. And all these aspects, um, I didn't, I didn't realize uh, the importance of these aspects. But I started, you know, to read all these uh, books about millionaires, uh, going to these uh, conferences about self-development, about business, and uh, I found myself in one of the conferences, jumping around and high-fiving with other people, and, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. shouting, uh, "You've got a millionaire mind." And uh, it somehow didn't resonate with me, right? And then I, I didn't know what it was. And after yeah. a while, I realized, of course, I, I've got a millionaire mind. I have created a multi-million dollar company. I was a millionaire at that time already. Yeah. Uh, but it's not what I understood as uh, being successful. And I realized, you know, I can't. I, in order to actually compete with the people, I had to compete in my uh, industry. I needed to do much more. I needed to... Uh, to reach for much better knowledge, uh, much higher level, and uh, I'd rather had, I'd rather have a billionaire mind instead of having just a, a millionaire mind. And I realized, you know, I can't actually the knowledge uh, from these thousands of books about millionaires and so on. It just didn't uh, give me that knowledge. I had that knowledge already, or at, at least it didn't help me to compete with the people I had to compete. So I. Uh, I realized I had, I have to learn uh, from actually from the best entrepreneurs in the world, and uh, because you know, in, like in every aspect of life, if you want, yeah. you are in UK, right? So yeah, football yeah. is uh, big in UK. If you want to play uh, Premier League, uh, playing uh, or learning from a third league player what bring you there right what help you to get there you need to to learn uh, you would like to learn from the best people in the world in order to to have the chance at least to to get to premier league or to play in champions league uh, so it's the same with business right yeah, you should yeah, learn yeah. from the very best people in business and uh, who are the best people in business i mean there is one objective measure of a business success right i mean you yeah. can define business different ways in different, uh, let's say, aspects of life, right? But in business, it's really simple. It's just a network. 
right? It so. is, it is. And it's interesting you say that because I'm linking it to when we, the reason we started the podcast, because the, the, the shift in my mindset, obviously coming from nothing to then sitting around with a mentor who's worth, you know, hundreds of millions, is just being around them people. And that's what the podcast is about. So it's interesting, you're, the way you're talking, it's right. It's being around the network uh, right. because they've got so the information. Yeah. They get, info, get, uh, they get information, they get the right uh, mindset, uh, yeah. the, right, uh, the right knowledge, uh, of course, experience, uh, contacts. Uh, there's a lot of uh, what you can get from, from these people. And generally, you know, this is like a, a general uh, knowledge. You are the uh, average of five people uh, around you. Generally. Yeah, 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 it's true. Uh, if you raise the level of the people who are around you, then... Uh, you have to, to raise immediately uh, just uh, for the, it's just pure psychology. You have to uh, level up in order not to be ashamed of uh, you know of talking to, to them or, or you know uh, uh, being um, uh, embarrassed when you talk to them. Right? Yeah, I experienced yeah. that in my ultra running. Right? Because uh, you know ultra running uh, like you when you run over let's say 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and so on. Before that, when I uh, uh, went to ultra running, I, my most, my, my best, uh, my, let's say, uh, major achievement was a, just a, a marathon, 42 kilometers, right? But, when, when, uh, but then when you are around people who run 100 kilometers yep. or more, uh, you are just embarrassed when you talk about uh, yeah. your experiences with marathons. You have just to run as much as they in order to, uh, to participate in the conversation, right? Yeah. So you have to level up in order to, uh, to be uh, somehow of value uh, to, to them, right? To be, uh, uh, I mean, to, to have the excuse to talk to them, right? It's, and this is the same it's, with in, in business, right? You are just forced more or less to level up to the people around you, right? Yeah, it's so true. And you're right, because, uh, and also what, what you know, we're going to go deep into the, your, your findings, but it's when you're sitting around people, like you said, for example, you know, for myself, when I was, uh, we're, we're in a small area called Burton, my agency was first formed. But when I started to go to London to meet these other companies, and it's, it's, you kind of don't want to talk about yourself. And then, but what you do is you level up, like you said. You then expand. But, you know, we're going to go more into this book because there's oh, so much stuff there. But I want to talk a bit about your story because, you know, I want to get people to know a bit about you. Tell us a bit about your story going back, um, Rafael, and where you started and a bit about your business journey because you've got some real good information that, which then led you to research, you know, these billionaires. Right, as, as I said, you know, I actually started my company um, out of the dorm uh, back in the 90s. I'm generally based in Germany, right? Yeah, so, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, and back in the 90s, it was like 97, 98. I went to the United States. It was an exchange program, uh, you know, for, I was a student, um, a graduate student. And uh, it was a time where, at least in Germany, in Western Europe, uh, uh, the uh, internet was starting in the form that we have today, more or less. Yeah. It was pre-Google times, I have to... Uh, wow. Uh, it was pre-Google, pre-Facebook, and so on. So yeah. Web 2.0, 2, 2. 2. 2.0 wasn't there. And um, uh, the internet wasn't commercialized at all in, in, in Europe. The first, let's say, uh, information services like, like Yahoo were online and maybe, you know, like the local versions of that, WebDE in Germany. Uh, but generally, like uh, private people, maybe some of them had email, uh, yeah. but uh, they didn't use internet in any, in any ways. It was something like for students for, you know, at the, at the university, like when you were studying computer science or maybe maths, uh, like me, you had an email uh, account and maybe you, you had some, uh, you did something on the yeah. internet, but there were no commercial websites. But I went to to the states, and um, uh, in the states, uh, in the United States, the uh, internet started to commercialize. So the first online shops and so on. Uh, for example, uh, Amazon was um, founded like uh, I guess 1994. Yeah, I think about it was yeah. eBay. By, but at that time, nobody knew about Amazon. It was just too small, right? Stories, there were yeah, like yeah. other. Uh, 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 other shops, but they weren't really functional. I mean, uh, not that 
they, they didn't have that uh, functionality like they have today. And in Europe, if companies had uh, their websites, they were ju just postcards generally. They, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to order something, it was like, you know, write us an email. Or maybe they had a catalog, but you couldn't on, uh, order online. But, you know, I... I realize where uh, the future will be uh, of internet that will it will commercialize and you know all the e-commerce will or or the commerce will move into internet. Uh, and I came back from uh, from the states with this idea to uh, to actually do something with my know-how because I learned uh, HTML and some like basic yeah. stuff uh, in the states and uh, wanted to somehow apply my knowledge. And started just an online shop out of the door with nothing, with zero capital. With uh, actually, um, I actually put my know-how with the know-how of my father because um, my father had a, a company uh, uh, that, uh, like a small import export company in this uh, market, in this uh, uh, sporting equipment market. So I. I didn't have, you know, to start with uh, zero in the sense that I had some suppliers already, right? I didn't have to win uh, suppliers. Yeah, there yeah. weren't some suppliers that I could use for the online shop. And, uh, you know, after a while, this import-export company was just outgrown by the some several orders of magnitude by my business. So uh, we just dropped the other uh, uh, the other. Uh, business model and yeah. stayed only with uh, with the online shop. So this is general uh, the stuff and uh, you know after a while from a um, let's say a hobby project it became it just you know I started uh, hiring people and at, at some point I just had to decide whether I uh, do it full time yeah, uh, yeah. or I because I was working for a uh, internet agency at that time or uh, also and i did like half time the internet agency <laughs> half time my business but at some time i had to just to you know to decide uh, do it full time or let it somehow uh, uh, sink in yeah care yeah generally because you know if you don't take care of that of everybody course. does it, uh, it's, its own uh, his own way and it just doesn't doesn't work and uh, I decided, you know, to do it full time, and it grew then pretty quickly to several millions uh, in uh, revenue. Uh, but as I said, it was uh, it wasn't very profitable at uh, at the beginning, and uh, there was a lot of stress for the outcomes or for the output uh, it, it brought actually. Right. Yeah. So I, I realized uh, after like 10, 15 years into the business. I have to improve myself, right? Yeah, I have yeah. to improve my uh, my knowledge, my um, not only my knowledge, my also my mindset, and uh, and so on. And then I started, you know, I uh, had this idea or this uh, mission to actually learn from the billionaires, right? Right from the self-made billionaires, so people who started with zero and uh, created billions of dollars in value in their business. Yeah. So you, you, that's great. And, and I can see how that links. Do you know, you, you mentioned about, you know, like obviously most entrepreneurs, you know, get to a level of scale where it's like it's competitive, everyone's doing the same thing. You could be at a million turnover, but obviously what, if I could take you just fast forward and we'll go back to some more details of the book, but what have you learned from the billionaires that now if you had that knowledge you would take back to when you were, like you said, getting frustrated yeah. with the so growth. I can, I, I, I can tell you, for example, you know, uh, since, um, because it's like a six year journey, uh, yeah, the book, yeah. it took me six years to interview uh, them and so on. I will tell you more about that. But uh, to, uh, more or less since uh, we're for a year now, I have, um, I uh, for over a year, uh, I have, I uh, have, codified all these principles, the 20 yeah. principles that you find in the book, the, yeah, yeah. the principles of billionaire wealth and success. And uh, since I was traveling most of my time, so like 60% of my time I was traveling, and even if I wasn't traveling, I was like uh, putting a lot of um, uh, effort or a lot of time into that project and also in other projects that, that developed since then. So I spent maybe only 10% of my time in my e-commerce company. Uh, so I wasn't able to uh, implement everything from, yeah. uh, from what I learned from the billionaires. But 
at least the, let's say, uh, the soft factors. This is what I implemented already. So uh, generally the stuff, how we, uh, how we see ourselves uh, as a company, how we see our customer, how do we communicate uh, with ourselves? How do we communicate with the customer? How do we uh, approach problems? Uh, all these soft uh, factors that I uh, write about in the in the book, yeah, and they are several. I implemented, and since then, like in a year, uh, the revenue of the company doubled and the uh, uh, profitability more than tripled just by uh, implementing the uh, you know the. Uh, yeah, the soft principles. And you know how uh, how difficult it is to yeah. double the revenue and more than triple the profit in a multi-billion dollar company. It's That's like, right. It's hard. It's completely different, you know, at the beginning when you are small yeah. uh, and so on. It's, uh, it's different when you uh, when you are in, you know, several several million in revenue, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's interesting because if you think the research you've done in the book and what you've shared, if you think about it, how many businesses out there struggle with where you were and where they are and exactly. by using some of the principles that you've been out and seen these billionaires, um, how it can just change something. Um, and yeah, and this is actually, you know, the reason that I wrote that book because I, I, I thought to myself, of course, I could keep the the, uh, the knowledge for myself or whatever. Yeah. But on the other hand, millions of people around the world are in the same. Uh, place where I was and need the same knowledge because it, this is a really universal uh, business knowledge. You know, this is what I uh, what also differs maybe in my project from uh, from uh, the projects like Napoleon Hill that was of course a great inspiration for me. Napoleon yeah. Hill, one hundred years ago, he wrote this book, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Yeah, very good book. Yeah. He researched you know the most successful people in the states. Uh, but what I did is uh, I went one step further. I uh, researched uh, people not only from the States. I did it uh, from the States. I did it globally. Yeah. So people from different world regions, like six six continents. I would go also to Antarctica, but there, there are no business. You know, like there are no business there. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Six other continents. Uh, uh, then uh, different cultures, different religions, different industries, um, yeah. age groups also mentalities uh, so this is uh, a great variety of businesses and of course they are completely different personalities uh, who live in different cultures with different business models and so on but they have this common uh, these common denominators that i was looking for what is yeah. the you know commonality what are the commonalities in their personalities in their attitudes and so on and I was looking for these things because I believe that these are uh, essential for, for their success. Apparently, no matter where you are in the yeah. world and uh, no matter your industry and no matter maybe your culture. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And, and now the global scene is it, even more you know, reachable. So I'm actually some random questions because I think it's because there's so much to cover. We've really got limited time. So in regards to, do, do you think anybody can be a billionaire after researching the billionaire? Oh. No, I don't say that. No, it's not like um, only uh, the least people can become billionaires uh, at all. I write about that in the in the end of the book because, yeah. uh, and the answer is generally why? Why is it like this? Because generally, most people just aren't um, ready or aren't willing to pay the price because right. there's always uh, a price to pay for success. Right. And uh, in in the case of uh, of billionaires or becoming you know uh, getting to that level, this is just uh, decades of uh, high of performance of business performance on highest level, right? And this is a lot of um, um, of things you have to give up for that uh, in your maybe private life, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You are you aren't able to spend, you know, uh, something like let's say uh, life and work balance, right? That is taught in many billionaires' book. Yeah. With work-life balance, you won't become a billionaire, right? Yeah. So this is not uh, the uh, billionaire mentality, and uh, this is also something different because uh, between be being, let's say happy and uh, becoming extremely successful in business right yeah they are yeah. two different goals you can somehow maybe put it together uh, but it's a different goal if you just want to be happy in your life 
I don't think this is the right uh, the right way to go, right? Uh, yeah. Because uh, you have to sacrifice a lot in your life. I just just give an example to my listeners and also the people watching this on on, on the video. Um, you give an example in the book where if someone's just earning five hundred thousand pounds a year, which is a phenomenal amount. Right. Right. Well, so I, uh, to, yeah. to be, uh, you know, to, uh, this is a good thing to, you know, to Give somehow uh, picture the difference between a millionaire and billionaire because yeah. most people just don't realize uh, how right. huge, the, how gradual the difference is, right? So let's say five hundred uh, thousand uh, pounds a year, right? Uh, or let's say five hundred thousand dollars a year because this. Uh, 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 so. Uh, I have I, I have a friend who who told me like two years ago he was uh, making five hundred thousand uh, dollars a year in yeah. profit. So and uh, he he's been doing that for several years already. So in in every measure he is a millionaire in terms of net worth. In, uh, yeah, in dollar, yeah, right? dollar millionaire. But yeah. you have to realize that for him to become a billionaire, he would have uh, he would uh, need to be born because. Uh, before Jesus Christ, right? That's yeah, crazy. Uh, over two thousand years, right? And uh, he would need to save up everything and uh, don't pay any taxes, and uh, of course, uh, you know, he's uh, protect his uh, his wealth throughout all the wars and and so on, crises and so on. So it's just uh, this is the difference in velocity uh, of how uh, how fast you build value. Uh, between a millionaire and a billionaire, right? Yeah. And this is also somehow it shows also uh, also a difference uh, in attitude be, uh, between a millionaire and a billionaire because millionaires or let's say people below millionaires and millionaires mostly or in like ninety nine point nine percent of cases yeah. they think about making money about uh, earning money, right? Yes. Yeah. And billionaires. They they don't think about earning money. They think about uh, building value, and this is a, a difference. You are not able uh, to make billions. I mean, to earn to earn billions uh, of dollars. This is just not possible. Nobody has earned billions in, in dollars. But what you can do is to build a company, to build a value. Yes. That uh, uh, that uh, I mean, to build a company that will have that value, like several or a lot of, let's say, ten, tens of billions of dollars or hundreds of billions of dollars, and you have shares in that company, right? So uh, so this is a, a difference, right? So you have, you build value instead of uh, making money or earning money. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the, uh, of the differences in attitude, uh, in business attitude be, uh, between millionaires and billionaires. Do you, do, so with these billionaires, so I get that totally. Do you think at, at, on your research at the start though, because at the start, when you're starting a business, you're trying to scale it, cash flows, everything. Yeah, right. Do, d- did, they, <clears throat> did they start with that mindset from the start? Because, you know, once you've accumulated uh, money, season. So. I mean, it, it, it depends. Probably not. It is something that you uh, probably discover um, at some point in your business career, right? And uh, but you have to make that change. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, to go to that level. Yeah. Right. So a lot of uh, billionaires actually started just, you know, they I actually described ten billionaire motivations in that book, right? Yeah. And yeah. these motivations change in the uh, in the uh, in your business career also. Uh, but many people just started uh, a business because, for example, they uh, they didn't want uh, to be hungry, right? And they want to uh, uh, be responsible for themselves and not being uh, dependent on somebody else to give them money or, you know, to support yeah. themselves, right? So they wanted to be on their own. And uh, so one of the motivations, right? Or some people just um, uh, started, like, to... Uh, started to to make money uh, but then at some point they made this uh, this switch right so they are uh, i describe uh, you know in that book um, the thinking um, or the attitudes to towards life towards business on three different different levels yeah, yeah. the lowest level i call drifters so generally the people who drift through the oceans of the of life uh, without a goal you know they are yeah. like somehow 
um, uh, yeah, uh, moved by the waves of the events or by the winds of the catastrophes, whatever, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. they just don't uh, decide or de don't, they don't steer their lives. They don't decide where they are in their lives and they don't know where, uh, where they want to go. And of course, they don't uh, know how to get there, right? Because they don't have a goal. Yeah. Uh, so these are the drifters, uh, generally the unsuccessful entrepreneurs. Then we have uh, the, let's say, average entrepreneurs, which are billionaires. And this is, when I say that, most people say this is outrageous. How can you say a millionaire is, not, uh, is an uh, average person or maybe uh, even mediocre entrepreneur that I yeah. say? But you have to realize in the, in the States, for example, right? If you are five years in business and you survive business for five years, you have 50% probability that you are a millionaire. Like 50% yeah. of people who survive five years in business in the States are millionaires. Right, so this is really average, and uh, you are in London probably right now. You can't even get an apartment for one million uh, dollars in, in London, right? So, would you describe that uh, that as uh, uh, outrageous business success or something uh, out of this world? No, this is uh, actually average. Uh, every entrepreneur should be able uh, to afford an apartment in London, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, uh, so this is really, uh, let's say, uh, average performance in business. And then I have the highest level of uh, entrepreneurship or of business thinking, and this is the billionaire level. And I describe in that book the differences on these three levels, because in, on, in every aspect of these 20 aspects, me, uh, uh, the, um, the drifters think differently from uh, from millionaires. So the unsuccessful from the uh, from the successful entrepreneurs, and then the millionaires and the billionaires still think differently from millionaires. Yeah, so yeah. Then, you know, if you want to go to the billionaire level, you you have to, to think even differently from uh, from millionaires from what you uh, read in uh, in the millionaire books, right? And yeah. I describe these differences in different aspects, right? Yeah, so I, I know the book's got so much information. So I want to ask you some, just generally, to give a teaser to the, to the audience and the listeners. So what was the most interesting, I know it's hard to say because you interviewed all of them, was there one guest that you really, really kind of connect to with and find it so interesting? Yeah, currently, I mean, all, all, of, all of them are just uh, extremely successful yeah. entrepreneurs, extremely uh, inspiring and uh, um, and sometimes also exciting personalities, uh, yeah. right? I mean, you have to realize in, in that book, I have five of uh, the ente world entrepreneurs of the year, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There is this global competition uh, um, that is made by Anson Tiang UI, and they okay. choose the best entrepreneur in every country every year. Um, and once a year, and it is called then Entrepreneur of the Year. And from every country, once a year, uh, they come, the best entrepreneurs from every country come to, um, uh, to Monaco to choose the best entrepreneur in the world for that year. Yeah. And uh, it is called then the World Entrepreneur of the Year. Okay. And uh, yeah. they have been doing that for 20 years already. So you have from, uh, from 20 uh, world, uh, world Entrepreneurs of the Year, eight of them are actually self-made billionaires. So right. only eight of yeah. these people would qualify for that book, right? Um, yeah. And five of them participate in that book. So we have uh, five of the, uh, you know, uh, world the best, the chosen best entrepreneurs in the world from different years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, coming back to your question, uh, of course, there are uh, people who I identify a lot with and who became my friends and who, for example, supported me or became my mentors. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is something uh, that, that is clear, but I want uh, maybe to, to say something that may uh, be, that, may, that your audience might relate yeah. a lot uh, with. Um, is Peter Hargreaves. Peter Hargreaves is a, let's say, grandfather figure for, for me. And uh, he um, he created Harvey's Lansdowne. You probably yeah. know Harvey's Lansdowne, yeah, uh, yeah. investment retail company in um, in uh, UK, uh, re retail investment company in, in the UK, one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, uh, broker. Um, and uh, it is a FTEC 100 company, 
and it is the only FTEC 100 company that was uh, created without uh, uh, without uh, loans and without acquisitions. So no, no Amazing. other company. He yeah. had never had uh, uh, this guy never had a loan in his uh, in his company, right? Wow. Uh, wow. A bank yeah. loan or anything, and uh, he, they never acquired any other company to grow. And nevertheless, they became a FTC one hundred company. This is the only uh, case that uh, known until now in, in, in history, and um, and uh, the thing with uh, Peter Hargreaves is uh, why. Why I find him, in, I mean, uh, apparently there are a lot of things uh, that are interesting about him, but uh, uh, that he defies somehow a lot of the uh, misconceptions about billionaires, right? Oh, that, okay. uh, people have that uh, misconception that billionaires just sit on the mountains of money. They don't know how what to do with their money, with their time, and they just spend their time thinking how to spend the money, right? Yeah, this yeah. Absolutely uh, wrong uh, understanding of how, of how billionaires actually live and what, how they, uh, uh, what the world is about, right? And uh, Peter Hargreaves shows like several, or like defies several of these misconceptions. For example, when I interviewed him, it was maybe four or five years ago. When I interviewed him, he was driving... Uh, uh, eight-year-old uh, uh, Toyota Prius, right? Right, okay, yeah. And he's a billionaire, apparently, right? And he, he said, you know, he, he doesn't need a better car, right? And he, in his um, and he, in his company, there are no uh, company cars. So everybody uh, drives his private car, and if, uh, and if he needs, he gets a taxi or whatever, but there are no company cars. They are not like, you know, like this lavish lifestyle of financial uh, barons or whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, managers in finance. And this is why he uh, his company could, could grow that fast. And uh, also uh, another thing that is interesting about him is uh, that he is, that they are actually no, and can you imagine, to build uh, several billion, uh, he, I think he, he has over 100, million, uh, 100 billion dollar uh, dollars under management uh, uh, as of today, wow. how we signed down, right? Yeah. And to build such a big company without any meetings, there are no meetings in his uh, in his uh, company. Yeah. So only uh, uh, there are only uh, conversations between two people. And uh, he what he what he did was he he moved and he removed any meeting room. There are no meeting rooms uh, in his company and no sitting opportunities in his company except for uh, at your own desk, right? So if you want uh, something from somebody, either you write him an email, you call him, or you go up to him, but you have to stand, right? Because uh, then it, it is very effective, apparently, and uh, you talk business and you don't, uh, you know, uh, talk about... Uh, all the topics, the yeah, yeah, so he's straight to the point. And, uh, for example, if uh, Peter Argus, uh spotted a meeting, like, let's say, in a, in a lobby or somewhere, uh, like three people talking to each other, then he joined the meeting and they said uh, to him, yeah, we are just <laughs> finishing, right? And they yeah, said, yeah. okay, so let's, let's finish. Let, I, I wait till you finish. <laughs> so this is, uh, and he it's says, like, it's like the, uh, Peter Argus is like the, uh, like the e efficiency in person, efficiency, uh, so yeah. to say. And uh, you, you can see that in uh, several billionaires, right? I have another billionaire, uh, uh, Frank Hasenfratz from, uh, from Canada. And uh, he also says, you know, he tries to minimize the meetings. And there is this uh, anecdote when uh, he was meeting with uh, his lawyers and with some other managers. So maybe they were like, Ten people in the uh, in the meeting, maybe seven, eight people. I don't, I don't know. So some some meeting, right? And one of the lawyers told a joke, a joke, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Peter Agris looked at his watch and said, "Okay, uh, three minutes. This uh, this joke uh, took, uh, <laughs> took three minutes. It costed me like one hundred fifty uh, dollars. Next time." Uh, you uh, you tell a joke, we clock it, we clock it out. Wow. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is the it's all, about of, it's all about efficiency, you know. Efficiency, at, uh, uh, Peter Agri tells, uh, for example, measure everything you uh, 
uh, you know, in business, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like, you know, he compares it to like competitive running or whatever. When you run, imagine you run a, a marathon or like, well, let's say 100 meter dash, right? And you wouldn't measure your time. It's senseless, right? I mean, you yeah, have of course. to yeah, uh, yeah. measure because this is what your performance is about, right? So everything you do in business, you measure it. And there is another, of course, uh, principle that comes with that. Uh, that everything you put your attention at, it actually grows, right? Or it yeah, improves. yeah, focus, yeah, yeah. Uh, because you focus on that, you put your energy, and alone uh, the fact that you observe it, it makes it better already, right? Yeah, definitely. And look, t- testing and measuring is is such a simple thing, but like you said, how many people do it? Right, absolutely. Crazy. So, for example, Frank Hasenfratz, I, I said. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I wanted to challenge him, right? And yeah. I said, are you, are you really measuring everything you're doing? Like, he says, yeah, of course. And I said, okay, uh, do you measure how long, uh, how much time you need to, uh, to shape yourself? He says, yeah. yes, not only that. I know how, exactly how many strokes I need. That I really? Said, like wow. 78. Wow. And uh, I started with 78 and right now I need 80 because I'm more wrinkled, but 80 strokes and between two and a half and three minutes, right? Wow. And I said, wow, this is amazing, pretty. I mean, he really, uh, it's not like he's not bullshitting me. He really does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I want to ask you this question. So, they're really key, good takeaways. Was there any more that was there any traits you saw? I know you obviously go into detail within your findings, and that's definitely where you need to be at to find detailed stuff. But could you give some highlights? I mean, was there something which you saw in like all of them? You thought, you know what, you know, that moment where you think that is just one good trait that yeah, these are the, the 20 principles that I wrote about. But I will give you, let's say, um, uh, maybe we'll start with. Uh, or I will tell you what I started. Uh, yeah, yeah. Point, uh, be because good. this is uh, also a major difference that most people maybe don't realize or uh, do wrong in their lives. Uh, and I will describe that on, on these uh, three different levels uh, that uh, that I told you about. Yeah, yeah, okay. Drifter, millionaires, and billionaires. So uh, drifters have uh, this uh, impression or this attitude that uh, they are the product of the circumstances in their lives, right? That life happened uh, to them. So they say, for example, things like, you know, I was born in that country, I didn't have a chance, or, you know, my parents were stupid, or they didn't care, take yeah. care of me, or, you know, I went to the wrong school, to the wrong university, or, you know, uh, I didn't know the right people, or I wasn't at the, at the right spot, and all that. So this is the... Uh, uh, generally, you know, the drifters, uh, they see themselves as product, as the product of the circumstances, of the conditions around them. And uh, they say, you know, uh, also things like, in order to be successful, you need to be, ha- uh, you need to be lucky, right? So yeah. they see success as, as luck in, the, in their lives. And these are the people who, um, uh, who then play lotteries right uh, mostly yeah, <laughs> because yeah. they, they think uh, the only way to succeed is to win in a lottery right yeah. but uh, then they realize even if they win the, the lottery they don't know what to do with that money. Do the money yeah that's right use, uh, lose the money okay so this is the uh, the lowest level of success then the millionaires they say uh, you know i have uh, my fate in my hands uh, and i'm generally the captain of my life but i need uh, Opportunities. I need to be maybe in the right uh, time, right, uh, uh, no, uh, in the right place, or you know, encounter some opportunity to take advantage of that opportunity. And uh, so, uh, uh, so this is the millionaire thinking. And the billionaires say, no matter what uh, the uh, circumstances around me, I have my vision, I have my way, and I will do everything and uh, to get there. And they then. Then they they do, and if you take the billionaires in in, in, in the book, the, the billion dollar secret, you realize most of them you wouldn't uh, like to start uh, in the conditions they started, right? Because they yeah. started, uh, they didn't become uh, so extremely successful because of the conditions they were born uh, in or they uh, they were in. No, they became so extremely successful despite these conditions, right? Yeah. Because you have people there who were born Bedouins on the Syrian desert, right? Uh, for example, Mohat uh, Altrat, who uh, 
uh, as I said, was a Bedouin on a Syrian desert. He um, uh, he was disowned by his father when he was born and uh, driven out uh, uh, from home with his mother. And uh, his father uh, slaughtered his brother literally to death. Then his mother died when he was four. He mm -hmm. was raised by his grandmother and who didn't uh, let him go to school because his, uh, she said school is for lazy people. At his destiny, or he should be uh, um, uh, a shepherd. Yeah, uh, and uh, and he had uh, literally to escape from home every day to go to school. Right, and nobody cared. Uh, yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. Supported him. He didn't have anything. The only thing he he owned was a torn down jalaba that he outgrown. Uh, for years, and there were many days. He said, "He says when he uh, when he woke up and um, and uh, he uh, he wasn't sure if he would get anything to drink or to eat that day, and maybe it would be the last day in his life, right? And uh, and nevertheless, he managed, you know, to get uh, the best education he could in uh, in his environment, and uh, got a scholarship to go to Europe to, to France." Then uh, took over a bankrupted company that uh, he grew into uh, into a group of 200 companies, and right now he is the largest, uh, uh, the world's largest producer of scaffolding uh, equipment or a scaffolding in the world, a market leader um, in the world, and uh, he not only became a billionaire but he also was chosen the world entrepreneur of the year 2015, wow. so the best entrepreneur in the year. And this is only his business career, and he made uh, also four other uh, four other uh, four, uh, careers uh, that I write about in the book that is that are also amazing. So this is just a mind blow, right? Or so, I have another billionaire who was, uh, you yeah. know, uh, who was expelled from uh, the uh, uh, the ground school. I mean the. Uh, how do you call it? Basic school in in UK? No. Yeah, yeah, basic school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in the fourth grade, right after fourth grade, he was uh, expelled from school because he, he literally peed his schoolmaster on uh, on uh, his head. Oh. And uh, and when you you know after four years of schooling in uh, in uh, China, you are basically Ill illiterate, right? Because yes. they have like fifty thousand uh, uh, characters in uh, in Chinese. So, uh, and then he got into alcohol habits. So with 14, he was generally, uh, you know, uh, drunkard, uh, illiterate, uh, uh, yeah, drunkard and like a, a village doormat generally. Nobody, uh, you know, uh, gave him any responsibility. And he was given a job to take care of just one community cow, just one cow. This is every, everything they, uh, you know, they trusted him with. And uh, at some point with 14, he was illiterate and so on. And uh, it was a turning point. He, he just decided to get out of that misery and so on. And, uh, and then uh, he started, you know, to get up just one hour earlier. I mean, at 5 a.m. before he, he went to, to work and he was cutting grass at the river, selling it to the... Um, uh, uh, to the um, uh, horse owners or horse keepers to get some uh, pennies for that. And he needed one year uh, of saving to get a dictionary, a Chinese dictionary. Yeah, yeah. And three more years to get an encyclopedia. And he just learned by himself to read, to, to write, and everything he learned in his life. He learned by himself. He is like a completely autodidact. And five year, uh, 50 years later, more or less, he became uh, the largest uh, manufacturer uh, of auto glass in the world. And also he became uh, a world entrepreneur of the year, I guess 2009 or maybe 2004. I don't remember right now. So uh, just am amazing. I mean, how, I mean, from what beginnings you can, uh, you yeah, can yeah. And how much you can achieve if you have, you know, this drive, if you have this determination uh, and you put uh, that, that effort and, um, and, 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 have, uh, and you have the vision of what you want to, to accomplish, right? Now, it's amazing. Thank you, Shemba. How long did it take you to write this book then? How long was, it, how long was the journey? Yeah, 
so uh, it took me six years of my life. Uh, then uh, it was also, it, it needed apparently an involvement of 21 self-made billionaires. <laughs> yeah. uh, it needed several travels around the globe. Literally, I went around the globe several times. And <laughs> also uh, involvement of over 100 people right now. Right? Wow. Because it, is, uh, uh, it's, it was a really complex project. It was like my assistants, assistants on the side of the, uh, of the billionaires, then uh, people in uh, uh, like who contacted me with the billionaires, uh, then uh, people in the publishing process in, in these different editions. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of effort. And, uh, you know, this is something that is also, I think, important in, in business because people always look at the results or uh, let's say yeah. uh, they define the, the success or no, no, not the success maybe they are happy uh, when uh, they get the results or the results make them happy yeah. but uh, what I think is important in business to look at is uh, the, not on, yeah, the process uh, but also uh, the thing that you actually put out in the world, your production, right? So yeah, yeah, the, definitely. The thing you prepare for the future success or for the uh, uh, for the for the results, right? Yeah. So and I am really proud about that. That you know, like six years, I was like uh, preparing or drawing that uh, uh, in order, uh, yeah, for uh, for for the future, for you know, to uh, to get the knowledge, to get the the know how, and also to help others to. Uh, to get to that level, right? To that yeah, and, and, that, and that a lot of it comes to passion. You're passionate about the topic, so you're able Absolutely. to create Absolutely. this masterpiece, right. which will so live one, for... Yeah. yeah, this is one of the, uh, actually, of the chapters in, in, uh, in the book. Uh, I call it um, Boat. Uh, this is like this, uh, this emotional construction that you have to construct in yourself that yeah. will help you overcome all these obstacles, all these, uh, you know, uh, maybe um, failures, uh, all these uh, also mistakes that you that you do because it's uh, inevitable in your in your business life that you have obstacles, that you have uh, failures, and you know to get up and to continue after each of them, and you need some like a core set of. Uh, uh, let's say emotional structures that you have to uh, build up. And one of them is passion. Is passion. Right? Yeah. Not that, because you know uh, most people they just don't succeed because they don't they give up too early. After too one early, yeah. two mistakes, they say, you know, apparently it's not uh, it's it's not going to happen. They just lose the motivation. And in order to keep that motivation, passion is one of the elements. And I describe other elements in that book. Yeah, yeah, and that's a great thing. Well, we could talk for so long, and I've got loads of questions here from the community, but a lot of it's in the book. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get everyone to, to get this book and read the secrets in there, because you spent six years of crafting this book, and just, just by going through that, you're going to get a wealth of knowledge. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing Absolutely. so much. Uh, by the way, uh, if people want, they can get a free chapter uh, okay. on uh, thebillionedollarsecret.com get there uh, go there get free chapter Brilliant. if you like it you can get the book uh, I assume you will like it right? yeah definitely well, I think you should buy it but yeah if you want that free chapter we'll share the links in the podcast yeah. and also on the show notes so yeah so if, you, if, if you're not sure about the topic which why would you but check the chapter out and look it's out there and I'm sure you'll like it and uh, yeah I want to thank you for coming on and sharing just a Thanks small so much, of what it's... the book's all about Thanks so much. It was a pleasure. I hope I could get, uh, give some value to your uh, audience. And, uh, yeah. you can. And we're going we're gonna to more than likely meet in London when you're down and we'll do some more content and to get some more actual audience. Sure. Sure. Cool. So thank you for watching that video. If you want to see other videos and great guests, make sure you subscribe and like the video. So you can now head over to my website where you can see a bit of my story of building and scaling my businesses and also all the free resources and tools which you can help you on your journey in your brand and your business. You can also subscribe on the podcast so you can check on iTunes, Spotify and other locations where you can find the podcast. And I look forward to catching you very soon. Thank you.